Prophet Muhammad a mercy to the world. Qualities reflected in his conduct. Imam Ali also relates, he was the most concerned of the people for the people and the kindest of the people to the people. He also said, the apostle of God, whenever he shook hands with anyone, would never withdraw his hand until the other person withdrew first. Whenever he spoke with anyone about a need or a matter, he would never leave until the other person left first. If anyone vied with him to speak, he would always remain silent. He was never seen pointing his feet at anyone who sat with him. He would never send away someone who asked him for something without giving it to him or at least saying some kind words. When he looked at something, it would be with a glance from his eye. He would never speak to someone in a way they disliked. He would never criticize or praise food. The Apostle of God never criticized food. If he liked it, he would eat it, and if he disliked it, he would leave it. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, said, The Apostle of God used to divide up his glances between his companions and would look towards one and then towards another equally. It is related that Abu Darda said, Whenever the Apostle of God spoke, he would smile while speaking. Anas ibn Malik relates, Whenever anyone sat with the Apostle of God, and later stood up to leave, he would also stand up to see him off out of respect. Anas also relates, if the Apostle of God missed one of his Muslim brethren for three days, he would ask about him. If he was absent from town, he would pray for him, and if he was present, he would visit him, and if he was ill, he would also visit him. It is also related of him that he did not treat anyone harshly and would accept the apology of one who offered it. He was always smiling, except at times when the Qur'an descended upon him, or he was giving a sermon. He would often laugh, but without guffawing. If ever anyone, freeman, bondsman, or woman, came to him, he would always aid him or her in their needs. He was not uncouth or hard-hearted, nor one to bellow in the marketplaces. He would never requite a bad action with a bad action, but would forgive and pardon. He would offer a greeting whenever he met anyone. And whoever spoke to him regarding a matter, he would listen with patience until the person was satisfied and left. If he met a Muslim, he would offer his hand to him. Once, the Prophet was in debt to a Jewish man. The man came to retrieve what he was owed, but the Apostle of God said to him, I have nothing to give you. The man said, Then I will not leave your side, O Muhammad, until you fulfill your debt. He said, Then I will sit with you. So he sat with him until he prayed the noon and afternoon prayers, then the sunset and evening prayers, and the dawn prayer. The companions of the Apostle of God were threatening and intimidating him. And when the Prophet saw this, he said, What are you doing to him? They said, O Apostle of God, do you let a Jew detain you? He said, My Lord did not send me to wrong a covenanter or anyone else. When day rose, the Jewish man said, I testify that there is no God but God, and that Muhammad is his servant and apostle. Divide my wealth in the way of God. I swear that I have only done what I have done, so that I may see the description of you in the Torah. For I have read it there, Muhammad, son of Abdullah, whose birthplace is Mecca and will immigrate to Medina, is not uncouth or hard-hearted, nor stentorian, nor does he adorn himself with indecencies or obscene language. I testify that there is no deity but God, and that you are the Apostle of God. Here is my wealth, so do with it as God orders. This man was a very rich man as well. Once, Jurair ibn Abdullah al-Majari came to the Apostle of God's gathering, but the place was full, and he could not find a place. So he sat outside the house. When the Apostle of God saw him, he took his robe and folded it up, and tossed it to him, saying, Sit on this. Jurer took it, put it to his face, and kissed it. It is also related that he would accept the invitation to food of the freemen and the bondsmen alike, even if it was for trotter meals. He would always accept a gift, even if it was a sip of milk. He would not stare in the face of anyone. He angered for the sake of his Lord and not for his own sake. 
He would attend funerals and visit the sick. He would sit with the poor people and eat with the paupers and give food to them with his own hand. He would accept the apologies of anyone who apologized to him. He would not be superior to his servants in his food or clothing. It is related that Anas ibn Malik said, I served the Prophet for nine years, and he never said to me, you should have done this, and he never criticized me ever. Anas relates, I was a companion of the Apostle of God for ten years. I have smelled all types of perfume, but nothing was finer than his. If one of his companions met him, he would stay with him until the other man was the one to leave. If one of his companions met him and they shook hands, he would not withdraw his hand until the other person did so. He never exposed his knees in front of anyone, sat with him. It is related that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, The Apostle of God was extremely modest, and if ever he was asked for a thing, he would give it. He also narrated, The Apostle of God was more modest than a virgin girl in her bedchamber. If he disliked something, we could tell by his face. One of his characteristics was that he never frowned. If he heard someone saying something which he disliked, he would not confront him about it, but would say, what is the matter with some people who do or say such things? He would thus prohibit something without mentioning the name of the perpetrator. It is related that Imam Sadiq said, the apostle of God, God's blessings be upon him and his family said, my Lord has ordered me to cultivate seven characteristics, to love the paupers and approach them, and to say often the words, there is no power or strength except through God, to maintain the bonds of kinship even if they should have cut their ties with me, to look to those who are lower than me, and to not look to those who are above me, and to not be affected in the way of God by the aspersions of the blamers, and to speak the truth however bitter it may be, and not to ask anything of anyone. In conclusion, some Western scholars have noted that among the reasons that the people have gathered around the Apostle of God from the very first day until this day are three characteristics. His faithfulness for his companions at the time of his death are those who were with him from the very first day of his mission in Mecca. His simple and abstinent way of life from his early days until death, despite the fact that he had become a great ruler with wealth coming in abundance to him his down-to-earth manners to the utmost degree. He was like any one of the people and did not consider himself superior to them.